on a decommissioned municipal golf course destined to become the spring training headquarters of the Chicago Cubs, Dr. Jerry Howard and his archaeological crew plowed the earth for prehistoric irrigation ditches below the surface of modern Mesa, Arizona. The Hohokam are incredibly unique in North American archaeology. These are the only people that created huge irrigation systems and uh, use that as their main source of food, feeding water to, to their crops. They're going under the streets and uh, houses in, in the Phoenix area. So this is truly urban archaeology. By the classic period, that'd be AD 1100 through 1450, the canal system is large enough that it's irrigating uh, about 110,000 acres. That would support a population probably somewhere between 50 and 80,000. And I'm beginning to su suspect maybe even a little more as, uh, as people are moving into this area. Um, and so that's, that's, about the, that's the highest density of population in the prehistoric Southwest. These are um, large exposures that we've done of the prehistoric canals. Uh, that one has a canal that goes down to a depth of 13 feet. Uh, so we have some very huge canals here. They're very large at their head, at the river, and then they reduce in size pretty quickly through the first two kilometers, and then that uh, it kind of stabilizes with size, but it's still reducing as it goes out through the system. What they're doing is they're making the canal smaller as they use water for agriculture. They're losing it to evaporation and seepage. And so they, they shrink there the size of the canal uh, in order to keep the water flowing at a constant velocity. They want it to go to a certain velocity. If it goes too fast, it'll erode out the channel. If it goes too slow, it will drop all of the uh, silt and, and, and soil out of suspension, and it silts the canal up. So they actually engineered them to keep the velocity relatively constant from the head of the canal, the beginning, to its terminus or end. The other part of it is just the way they map these onto the landscape. They understood the landscape and they put them just in the right spot. And a lot of the gradients, the drop here, is between one and two feet per mile. That's hard to do. And our engineers haven't done any better since the time of the Hocom. It compares to modern irrigation systems very well. When Anglo farmers came in and started farming the valley, uh, they basically used the same routes as the old Hohokam canals, and in many cases actually just cleaned out the prehistoric canals. Yeah, using the, the digging stick, they could actually excavate these things. Again, uh, digging stick is used not like a shovel like we think about it in Western society, but as a, a crowbar. So if I'm digging a canal, I'll be down in the ground and uh, I'm digging that way. I just stick it in, pry bar off a piece, put it in a basket and hang, hand it up uh, and have it placed up on the berms, or the, the, the ridges that are built alongside of the canal using the material that's being excavated. When we, we look at the Hohokam and what they did here in the valley, there's a real message for us, uh, a, a very positive message actually. I often tell my students we look back in time at what these people did and it's pretty amazing when you stop and think that they did this with digging sticks and baskets. I think it really gives you uh, hope for the future. If they could do this, what is it we can't do?